Turn in your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to read the first eight verses for the text. And we've come to another week, the beginning of another week. It's amazing how they follow each other, isn't it? But the question is, how will we face the new week? How will we start out and how will we do in, in going through it and how will we finish? You know, I think we ought to determine, first of all, to start out each day with the Lord. Uh, just to start out with scripture reading, prayer, even a gospel song if possible. To start out with the Lord. And determine to be a witness this week. And to testify to someone about the greatness of our great salvation that God has given to us. And to tell people about Jesus. To be an encourager. I talk about that often because this world needs people who love people and who encourage people. And so I, I would just remind you of that. And just going over some of the things that we've talked about, not to interrupt people. You know, that's something that I find that we forget. I forget, all right? Uh, I used to know a minister, and, you know, he taught people not to interrupt because if you interrupt him, he would say, stop, I'm not finished yet. He would do that every time. Made, made people aware of that the fact that they were interrupting him. And so not to interrupt, but to have a good week in the Lord and to finish and to have a good week in the Lord, to be able to look back and say, I served the Lord this week. I did God's will. That's a successful week. Praise the Lord. I call your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us, for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we come before you. And Lord, we do love you. Lord, we just, uh, we don't say that enough. We don't express that enough, and we don't express it forcefully enough. Lord, we just ask you now to be with us in this service and bless us. We always are looking for thy blessings, Lord. We just ask you to open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings we cannot hold. Help us to be obedient to you, that you can bless us. Give us revival in our, in our own life. Lord, just open our heart and pour in thy Holy Spirit. Help us to seek thee every day. Help us to win souls for Christ. I bless this church and help it to be what thou dost want it to be, Lord, a soul-saving station, a place where people can come and be saved, and a place where people can grow in the Lord and be taught the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach on the subject, the trip to heaven. One family told of their vacation in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia. They said it was the greatest vacation that they had ever had in their whole life. They were thrilled about it and were making plans to go back the next year. They talked about the beautiful cabin that they had been able to rent at a very low price, they said. 
And they talked about the beautiful view that they had overlooking the mountains and, uh, and the breathtaking view that they could see uh, from, from the porch of their cabin. They said there was peace there. That when they wanted to, to sit back and relax, that they could sit back and relax in peace without the hustle and the bustle of all the cars and the city and things like that. They could even smell uh, the freshness of the mountains. And they said that whenever they wanted to, they could find things to do. They could find entertainment. And, and it was good not only just for the parents, but it was good for the whole family. And they were just thrilled to death with the, the visit that they had had to the Blue Ridge Mountains. You know, there's a lot that goes into a great vacation. First, pe people must decide where to go. What kind of vacation they want to have. Do they want to travel all the time or do they want to, to get into one place and stay there and just enjoy that place? Second, people have to make the necessary arrangements. How are you going to get there? Where are we going to stay when we do get there? And how long are we going to stay? How long is the vacation going to last? A lot of preparation has to go into a vacation most of the time. You know, I hope you're planning your trip to heaven. I hope you're looking forward to being with Jesus Christ forever and forever and forever. I hope that we are making preparation in our daily life. I hope that we are enjoying living the Christian life and enjoying the great salvation that God has given to us and that as we live, through, live in this life, we're growing with Christ. And when this life is over, either we will go with the Lord when he comes, or we will, we will pass away and be ready to go with him, still go with him when he comes, because there's going to be a resurrection. But to be with the people of God, think of that, to be with the people of God forever and forever and forever. Heaven's a great place. It's what the Christian life, you know, first of all, it's about Jesus. And then it's about the place we're going to live forever. First of all, to plan to go to heaven, a person needs a strong desire to live there. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that I read, verse 1 and 2, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. You know, the Apostle Paul conveys to us here that he had a strong desire to go to heaven. Heaven was, was, was the first thing on his list. He was looking forward to going to heaven. He said, for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Now, he was talking about two aspects, I think, as I look at these verses. First of all, he was looking forward to a new body. Wow, that's going to be something. Think about it. We, the Bible tells us that there is going to be, folks, first of all, there is an eternity. There is a, a, there is a spiritual world, if you want to call it that. There is a real place called heaven. And Jesus said he was going to give us a new body. We're not going to have to suffer with this body anymore. Paul was thinking about that. He had that in mind, I think, when he wrote this chapter. <coughs> the second part of it was he was thinking of his new home because he said it is eternal in the heavens. Paul was looking forward with, with great yearning to go to heaven. This was his, his great desire. Let me ask you tonight, how much do you want to go? How important is it that, that you have, that we, that, you know, you make that flight to heaven with Jesus? How important is it that we are, that we are ready to go when Jesus comes? Because the Bible says that Christ is coming for those who are watching for him, those who are looking for him. 